We are taught from Kohelis, which is brought down in Tanya, the wise man is on his head. The question is asked, um, why such an important book to say such a simple statement? But actually, it's not such a simple statement. It's really a key to understanding how to access the deepest part of your neshama. You see, the more one's mind is constantly focused on godliness, the more one's mind is gazing at Hashem's greatness, the greater the ability to access the love, not only that's buried deep within, but even create a highest level of love of Hashem. So this is a key component to our redemption. And it's not that difficult. It could be as simply as gazing at the world and the wonders of how Hashem really micromanages everything. It could be as simple as looking at the tree that was so bereft of uh, seemingly life and then it has its first blossom and it starts to be so green and you're just like in wonderment and in awe of Hashem's beauty of the world. It can be gazing at Hashem's Torah concepts and deep mystical ideas, but no matter what, when you continuously focus your mind and to this it actually reveals more and more of the true you. In fact, in Kuntus Ha Tfila, the uh, Rebbe Rashab goes in detail how this gazing at Hashem um, literally is the answer. And uh, we see in Tanya that it says, um, when we do this, we will be better for it. One of the ideas is also, which we'll get more into throughout the Tanya, is the more a person acts like the wise man that's like looking at whether this deed is gonna act as a, um, as an act that will cause the Shekhinah to rest on them, or they think it through if this deed is not going to be a deed that's going to allow the Shekhinah to rest. So that's why constantly the man, the wise man, is looking at his head where the Shekhinah wants to rest. So the more we use our Chachma and Bina and Das and use our three intellectual faculties to delve deeper and deeper into God's greatness, the greater the effect of this revelation. We also learn that um, since there's this war and this like challenge between uh, the Yetzahara uh, trying to convince the animal soul to use its, you know, ten faculties of soul toward negativity, and it's there's just like immense battle between the godly soul that also wants to conquer the body, the city as it were, and use all of its 12, uh, 10 faculties towards godliness. And the moment we rise above and uh, challenge that Yetzahara, which is called like an old fool because it, it's, it's created first and can have the upper hand since birth, uh, really only till bar and bar mitzvah does a person have even a slight access to their Yetzir Tov. So that's why it's called old. It's the first one that comes into the existence of the person and that's why you see children constantly um, seemingly not so empathetic and not capable of sharing as much and boasting because their Yetzir is really strong. So the more as we grow older, fight that inclination, um, the more we will have that uh, redemption within. So let's try right now to see how in our day-to-day -day life we can be more cognizant of this secret ingredient. Yeah, 
just gazing at Hashem, whether it's when you pray, whether it's when you learn Torah. Uh, again, the more in depth you use your three intellectual faculties, the more you'll be able to give birth to all these positive emotions. Uh, where can you throughout the day when you're even just, you know, uh, getting a parking spot and just think of the greatness of that kind favor Hashem did for you? Just like catch moments in the day where you can have like, you know, those miniature uh, moments in time to really connect to Hashem. And really even get in the habit of constantly having your eyes on your head besides just using your head more and more in contemplation as we said earlier but literally catch yourself saying is this going to allow the Shekhinah to rest on me or not uh, we could do just a 